you so much. Thank you so much for having me here. I've come from Delhi, which houses some of the most beautiful monuments in the country. The towering Qutub Minar, the beautiful Humayu's tomb, and the stunning India Gate. But even this imposing war memorial fades away under the blanket of pollution a few times every year. Delhi is not the only city which is struggling with pollution. We have among the most polluted cities in the world. Honestly, if pollution had a country code, it would read as plus 9-1. Transportation is one of the biggest causes of pollution in India. Different studies have shown that how it impacts uh, our lungs, our brains, and even leads to premature deaths. But not only do we burn oil and damage our health, we also burn holes in our pockets while being completely dependent on a geopolitically sensitive commodity. And this is when we just have 22 cars per thousand versus China, which has 2250 cars per thousand people, or US, which has 850 cars per thousand people. So what do we do? Should we stop moving? No, I think we need to move more because mobility is directly proportional to the economic development of the country. Should we carpool? Yes, we must carpool, but we still need vehicles. Maybe what we can do is we can replace these, this polluting and economy damaging fuel with electricity. So presenting to you my electric car. Actually, this was gifted to me by my secret Santa at my last job. I couldn't really drive it, but I could drive this one. And honestly, what a ride. And if I had not known about electric cars, I would feel, I would, I would be shocked. Because electric cars are supposed to be shitty, they are slow, the battery runs out, pain to charge, and they look bad. Because this is what you all read in articles, magazines, Twitter, LinkedIn. But honestly, that's not true at all. Electric cars will go a long way in solving for pollution and freeing us of oil. And let's look at how. So this Kona goes 450 kilometers on a single charge and you can fill the full battery under 300 rupees. Just in case you are wondering how on the earth is that possible, electric vehicles just don't waste energy like combustion engines. They are at least four to five times more efficient and cheaper to run. So even with higher upfront costs, they make an economic case today. Also, the math will get better every day because the conventional vehicles will keep getting expensive because of stricter regulations due to environment damage. While at the same time, the electric vehicles will continue to get cheaper because of the increase in demand and falling, falling battery prices. A recent study says that oil has to fall down to $10 a barrel from 60 today to compete with battery powered vehicles in long term. They just don't need any maintenance. Like people are spending money on windshields and tires. There's no fuel change, there's no oil change, there's no gasket to replace. And this is because electric vehicles have one tenth the number of moving parts. No parts are jostling, running, rubbing against one another and wasting energy. There's no exhaust to waste energy. And if you're wondering, what about the battery? Well, a Kona battery comes with a whopping 200,000 kilometer warranty for eight years. Most people replace their vehicles before that time. They are supposed to be slow. Come on. Kona beats the cousin Kreta. Different Tesla models have crashed 19 out of 20 supercars in drag races. This one is really sweet, like a Tesla Model 3 performance, which is cost, which costs only $56,000 in, in US, beat a Ferrari 458, which costs $230,000. And Tesla is a sedan. Ferrari is a supercar. Just like our phones, electric cars get better over time. So you go home, you get a software update which you install, and maybe it will increase your battery range by five kilometers, or you'll get a new navigation system, or maybe a sentry mode which can take care of your car when you are not around. 
and there are so many ways to charge them. You can you can plug them overnight, just like your phone, and get full charge in the morning. You can charge them at a fast charging station outside your home, and depending on the type of vehicle, the battery, the full battery can charge from 20-25 percent, 20-25 uh, minutes to one hour, depending on which vehicle it is. Like for Tesla Model 3, you can charge 80 percent in 20 minutes, a Kona in one hour, an FL scooter which we just saw in one hour. And if there's an option, you can actually swap your battery within less than a minute and get full range. Swapping is a really useful concept which has been proven by Gogoro in Taiwan, wherein as a consumer you can buy the vehicle without the battery and then which reduces the upfront cost of the vehicle, makes it probably below the IC vehicle and then you can use the battery on paper co-basis. While the electricity today is still largely powered by thermal, but it's getting cleaner by the day because of tons of solar and wind power which is being added to our grid every year. And if you want clean electricity from day one, you can actually set up your own solar rooftop or you can charge your vehicles at a solar powered charging station. Because the batteries are modular, you can stack them beautifully like the skateboard and this opens up so many design innovations. Like this is, this is like a canvas for an artist, you can do anything with this. So many electric car companies have used this design option to create a space in the front, which is called frunk. Moreover, electric vehicles don't cause any noise. They don't, you can't steal fuel from them. And they use regenerative braking, which means the energy which is lost in braking can be used to actually store in the battery. You know, I've been extolling the benefits of EVs for a while. The proof is in the pudding, right? In second quarter of 2019, Tesla Model 3, which is a mid-sized sedan, outsold all BMWs, all Mercedes, all Lexuses, Audis, Volvos, like all these vehicles are in the same class. Like if you compare it to the next most selling vehicle, Tesla Model 3 is four times the BMW 3 Series. So I'm not sure why people still worry about performance of electric vehicles. Honestly, this really summarizes the distinction between a conventional vehicle and an electric vehicle. A great conventional vehicle will still not match an electric vehicle in its class. And honestly, I really miss this E71. I'm not sure, but I had this phone for the longest. I have good memories, but I don't want it anymore because I have moved on to better things. And the same will happen with cars. Once you buy electric vehicles, cars, scooters, you would not want to go back to these fuel guzzlers. And it's not really only about two-wheelers or three-wheelers or cars. This is a 110-ton truck which is being used in a mine in Switzerland, fully electrically powered. And ultimately, everything that moves or below ground, on ground, above ground, in water will be electric, except for orbital rockets because, as Elon Musk says, uh, there's no escaping Newton's third law. You still need that action reaction to move the rockets up. And it's really happening. We're not talking about a distant utopia here. Last year, 2.1 million electric vehicles were sold all over the world. This year, we'll see 3.1 million vehicles sold. Norway has already seen more than 50% vehicles as electric month on month. China has 500,000 electric buses, millions of cars and scooters. We also have a strong momentum in India, especially in two-wheeler segment and in shared mobility. The fact is that electric vehicles are so cheap to run that they are no brainer for, for shared mobility. So anyone who runs a last mile logistics in India, anyone who runs a shared passenger vehicle is scampering to figure how they can transition from ICE to electric vehicles. The next three years will be momentous for India. The government has done so much in the last few years, including $1.4 billion in incentives to put charging stations to support purchase of electric two-wheelers and shared transportation. And I don't call it subsidy because they will actually make economic and environmental returns over a, over a very short period of time. This $1.4 billion in investment will actually return 
$4 billion in oil savings over a very short period of time. So we've seen the numbers, right? And But what happens is, still every day I read articles that, oh, no one wants to buy electric vehicles, that Tesla has reached demand cliff. And I have been seeing this for the last three years. Maybe this is going on forever. This has been done through a negative propaganda, to be honest, to just keep pushing that old oil auto industry. I mean, there are real challenges. We have to build plants to produce these batteries. We have to build plants to produce these vehicles. We have to set up charging stations. But these can be solved through our enterprise and capital. The real or the harder challenges is negative perception which is being created. But I'm very hopeful that we can get over these imaginary and real challenges and very soon achieve my dream. Honestly, in my head, the question is not whether electric vehicles will become mainstream. The question is how soon can we can we can make that transition happen. And this is a shared responsibility we have. Because every year's delay in bringing electric vehicles on roads will add millions of pollution causing economy damaging IC vehicles. And we need to work together in making this happen. Thank you.